My mother-in-law gave my baby chicken pox on purpose, saying it was the best and most natural way to kickstart her immune system, and my husband is on her side. Posted by you slash mill chicken pox. I can hardly type this out because thinking about it makes me so angry. Earlier this year, my husband, Jack, 31M and I, 27F, decided to spend Christmas with his family for the first time since our daughter, Annie, 13 months, was born last September. Since they live 12 hours away, we decided to stay for a few weeks before Christmas so they could spend lots of time with Annie. We arrived early as planned, and everything was great. I've had a few disagreements with my mother-in-law, Trish, 56F, in the past over my parenting style, she criticized me for using disposable diapers, buying baby food from the supermarket, and not raising Annie as an organic baby, but everything seemed fine. After a day or two of settling in, Jack and I decided to pick up a few gifts from a mall about an hour away before the last-minute rush kicked in. My father-in-law, 60M, tagged along. Trish said she was happy to take care of Annie. We got back a few hours later and Annie was down for a nap on a blanket I didn't recognize. Trish said one of her friends had dropped by and given it as an early Christmas gift. It looked pretty old and worn, but I figured one of her hippie friends was just recycling it. The next two weeks were fine, aside from Trish making a point to prepare meals for Annie from scratch. I mentioned this to my husband, and he said to just let her be. Annie mostly mushed the food Trish gave her with her hands, or threw the bowls on the floor, as she's been doing lately. Trish said it would take her a while to get used to nutritious meals. I was getting sick of her meddling, but it was only for a few weeks, so for the sake of the holidays, I let it slide. The day after Christmas, Annie was really unsettled and wouldn't stop fidgeting and crying. I took her temperature, and she had a fever, so I kept an eye on her for the next few days, and it thankfully started to go down. This morning, she started to get a rash and blisters on her arms and legs, and I freaked out. I was packing a bag to drive to the doctor when Trish asked where I was going. I told her Annie had a rash, and I was taking her to see a doctor. She got a weird, smug smile on her face and told me there was nothing to worry about. When I asked her what she was talking about, she said, without even looking at Annie, that what she had was just chicken pox. I asked her how she could possibly know that, and she casually admitted that one of her friend's grandkids had chicken pox a few weeks ago, so she asked them to wipe a blanket over the child's arms, legs, and face and bring it to her house. At this point, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I asked if that blanket was the gift Annie was sleeping on. She said it was. I lost my crap. To be honest, I don't really remember what I said because I was up most of the night for two days checking on Annie. I just unleashed on Trish, asking what the F was wrong with her. Jack and my father-in-law came to try to calm things down, but Trish dug in her heels and said chickenpox was the best and most natural thing for Annie to build up her immunity. I already have a vaccination schedule in place with my pediatrician, and she was booked to get immunized for chickenpox at 18 months. We drove to see the doctor, and he confirmed she had it. He said I'll have to cut Annie's nails short and might have to tape socks on her hands while she sleeps because kids so young can scratch until they bleed, which could leave scars. On the drive back, Jack started making excuses for Trish, saying that she was only doing what she thought was best. I couldn't believe he was defending her, and we fought most of the way home until I told him to stop talking to me. Annie's been scratching like crazy, and I just had to tape socks over her hands. Trish tried to talk to me when we got back, but I told her to get out of my sight. We were meant to stay until Wednesday, but I just finished packing up our stuff so we can leave first thing in the morning. I'm so angry I can't even think. Whenever I hear Trish moving around in the kitchen, my heart starts beating faster, and I feel like going out there and grabbing her by the hair. I don't ever want to see her again or let my daughter see her again. What can I say to make her and my husband realize the enormity of what she's done? I don't think I can speak coherently to their faces until Annie gets better. Update one two months later. Thank you to everyone for your comments, inbox messages, and advice after my original post. I read all the comments and messages, and they genuinely helped, especially the home remedies for stopping the itching. Now, onto the update. I didn't think it would be possible, but things got worse. I got up first thing the next morning and started packing our stuff into the car. Once I opened it up, I kept the keys in my pocket since I was going in and out, usually, we use Jack's set and leave mine in my bag. While I was packing, he sat in the kitchen with Trish and my father-in-law, chatting and having coffee like nothing was wrong. Annie was mercifully still asleep, so I gently belted her in and closed her door. Then Jack came out and asked if I had everything, and I said we were good to go as soon as he was. He said okay, and calmly took out his key set and centrally locked the car, locking Annie in. I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said we wouldn't be leaving until I apologized to Trish. I think I was stunned into silence because he then took the chance to rehash what he said the previous day, that Trish thought she was doing what was best, that chickenpox doesn't unalive you, and that I was making a bigger deal out of this than I needed to and making Trish feel bad. Yes, making her feel bad. All the comments from my last post were swirling around in my head, 
and I told him he needed to stop being a son and start being a father. He screwed up his face and said he would always be Trisha's son, and that was the point, that nobody should speak to his mother the way I had the day before, and I needed to apologize to clear the air. I felt like I had entered some kind of weird twilight zone where I had accidentally married a nine-year-old instead of an adult man, so I just asked him to open the car so we could leave. He repeatedly refused, then walked back inside and said he would see me in there when I was acting more reasonable. You can probably guess what happened next. I'd left my bag on the passenger seat, so he probably assumed my keys were in there. Nope, I waited 30 seconds, then just hopped into the car and drove away. My phone blew up with a million calls from him, Trish, and my father-in-law. Eventually, my mom, dad, and my sister Jess, who I'm super close with, called as well. I briefly texted Jess about what was happening the day before, but she was stunned to get the full blow-by-blow. By By the time I was on the open road, I asked her to call Jack and tell him he could walk home for all I care. When she heard my side of the story, and not Jack's, which was apparently that I had gone crazy, frightened Trish, snatched Annie, and sped away, she calmed way down. Mom, Dad, and Jess offered to start driving and meet me halfway so I could switch with one of them and wouldn't have to drive the full 12 hours by myself in one day. I was so grateful to see them that I pretty much broke down in a truck stop parking lot while blubbering that I love them. They all took turns driving while I rested. It was super reassuring to talk it over and hear that Trish and Jack were the unreasonable ones. Once we got back, I stayed at my parents overnight, and they said I could stay as long as I needed. The next few days were fairly tense. I was up most of the night making sure Annie didn't scratch, which she did anyway, somehow, and it seemed like she just cried and cried until she was exhausted. She now has five scars on her face and a few others on her arms from scratching. I know appearances shouldn't matter, but I'm so angry that her skin is marked for life now over some stupid BS. This whole thing is just something I never expected to happen. I answered one of Jack's calls only to have him start a rant that he didn't recognize this person I had become, so I hung up on him. He was due to come back for the start of the work year, which I wasn't looking forward to, but I figured we could make it work as long as Trish was 12 hours away. Then, at around 11 p.m. one night, I got a very short and formal text from my father-in-law via Jack's phone, saying that Trish had come down with shingles and was in the emergency room, that Jack was staying there to care for her, and that he would work from their house remotely once the year started back up. Jack's been there for the past few weeks tending to mama's every whim, I'm sure she's put on an Oscar-worthy performance of having one foot in the grave, and according to Google, it should be any day now that her painful, crusty pustules go gently into that sweet night. A few weeks ago, I was honestly so tired, overwhelmed, and in disbelief that I didn't know what to do. Now that I'm back at home with people who actually care about me, I think I'm starting to realize how lucky I am to see the weird relationship with his mommy this early on. The fact that he cares more about Trish than his own daughter speaks volumes. When he eventually comes back, I think we'll have to have a serious talk about our future together. Commenter. You only get shingles if you've had chicken pox, the new vaccine prevents it. Rather ironic. I get divorce papers served before mommy dearest decides your daughter should become a breatharian or join Scientology.